When President Kennedy addressed the nation in what is now known as the Rice Stadium Moon Speech, his immortal words rang out for all time for everyone to hear and learn that humanity was awakening and moving ever forward at a stunning speed. But it was not the words we choose to go to the moon that stands firm in our minds as the most significant words from that speech. When he stated that, it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer to rest, to wait. But this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who moved forward and so will space. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer to rest, to wait. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. The words challenged a nation and inspired a world. It signified motivation, triggered an entire civilization into action and not only captured our imagination, but opened up our minds to the possibility that anything can be achieved if we want it bad enough. The question of what the moon is will only be answered by going back there and undertaking unprecedented research. The very fact we have been here before only threw up more questions than answers last time around. There is no doubt that when we look at the moon in all its majestic wonder from the earth, that what we are looking at is an anomalous feature in our sky but also in no doubt that the moon is very necessary for the sustainability of life on Earth. But nonetheless, the moon is a weirdo, and all the evidence points out this fact. When the Apollo 12 astronauts released their lunar launch vehicle back to the moon to see what form of lunar impact would take, they were all stunned when the impact reverberated the moon like a giant gong a sound that would last for over an hour and stretch some 20 miles in space as they made their way home, seriously throwing into question what the moon is. Three, two, one, mark. Slam impact. As for the meaning of it, I'd rather not make a, an interpretation right now, but the, it is as though one had struck a bell, say, in the, in the bell belfry of the church a single blow and found that the reverberation from it continued for 30 minutes after 55 minutes the reverberation still had not faded completely between 1972 and 1977 seismometers installed on the moon by the apollo mission recorded moon quakes the moon was described as ringing like a bell during some of those quakes specifically the shallow ones this was suggesting overwhelmingly that the moon is not a naturally occurring satellite. It takes about 30 days to go around the Earth. The moon glows, and that's not because of any property within the moon. It's reflecting the rays of the sun, which causes it to glow. The reason that the moon has phases is that the Earth blocks the light of the sun as the moon moves around the Earth. So it incrementally gets a little more and a little bit more of the sun's rays. The moon's importance is very great. It leads to tides, which helps life transition from living in the ocean to living on land. It also stabilizes the Earth's tilt relative to its orbit. Without the moon, gravitational influence can cause the poles of planets to wander around kind of randomly. With no fixed stability, we are all over the place. The Earth would have been a much more chaotic place for life, especially human life, to evolve and survive if it wasn't for the Moon. When the Apollo 11 astronauts expertly maneuvered their vehicle and landed on the surface for the first time, there was a real consensus that they encountered advanced technologies brought there by beings that are not humans, possibly by the Anunnaki. What may be on the Moon today could be the remnants of the Anunnaki's mission to the Earth that led to the creation of humankind. According to a leading scientific NASA researcher, Otto Bender, various ham radio operators were able to intercept secret communications with mission control that were not made public. 
The astronauts reported to Mission Control a deep feeling of dread about seeing technological objects on the moon, including huge flying machines parked along the edge of a crater within their view. This seriously disturbed the astronauts who could see everything they knew. It seemed to them the Earth and her inhabitants was insignificant and there was either ancient or current activity or maybe even both within their presence on the moon. The moon, its exact size, is such that it gives us total eclipses. Its disk exactly covers the sun, and the chances of that occurring are so insignificantly small that it bends our abilities to think logically to the breaking point. It's practically impossible in all other scenarios. The sun's diameter is 400 times greater than the moon, and coincidentally, the sun also happens to be nearly precisely 400 times further away. The odds of the moon being in that orbit accidentally are a quadrillion to one. So that right there is evidence that our moon is in a perfect orbit around our planet. That's not accidental. In order to have a solar eclipse, the moon has to be in that exact position and exactly the size that it is, which is 2,160 miles. It had to be that exact number, 2,160 miles at its equator. It is astonishing. Coincidence? We think not, guys. From everything we have observed in the universe, all the data that has been gathered and stitched to render 3D models of everything we have ever seen or come across in the universe, we have never seen a moon and planet behave in the way the Earth and moon does. Other moons are sizably smaller by comparison to their mother planet. Earth's satellite not only orbits closer than it should for its size, it is also the only moon in the solar system that has a near-perfect circular orbit. And no other lunar bodies are known to have such a stabilizing role as the moon has with the Earth. On November 20th, 1966, the Lunar Orbiter 2 photographs what has since been described as giant spires that resemble Egyptian obelisk only 180 miles or so away from where Apollo 11 mission ended up landing. What this shows is what appears to be clear artificial structural arrangements on the surface, and there is eight of them, with the largest reaching an astonishing 15 stories tall, according to scientific calculations. Of these many anomalies, the spires are some of the most fascinating ones because astronomers have calculated that these spires are very tall for them to be exclusively natural occurrences. There is no doubt that NASA knows of these things and are not directly sharing them with the public. 50 years seems like a long time since the Apollo 11 landing, but it's not really on the scale of things in terms of what the moon is and who put it there. Well, maybe the answers to this question can be found in the documented accounts of the Anunnaki. Nana was the god of the moon in the Mesopotamian religions of Sumer and Babylonia. Nana is a Sumerian deity, the son of Enlil and Ninlil, whose seat was worshipped in Ur in the south of Mesopotamia and Haran in the north. A moon god by the same name was also worshipped in South Arabia. He was also a protector of shepherds during the period in which Ur exercised supremacy over the Euphrates Valley. He was considered the supreme god. It was then that he was designated as father of the gods, head of the gods, or creator of all things, and was also called he whose heart cannot be read, and was told that he could see farther than all the gods. It is said that every new moon, the gods gathered together from him to make predictions about the future, and we will, of course, be going into the story of the Anunnaki further, so please watch out for our new parts in the series. That's all for us for the moment, guys. Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.